Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be reviewing the research I conducted under the supervision of Dr. Dorothy Lerman at the University of Houston Clare Lake at the Center for Autism and Developmental Disabilities. My study is entitled Inserting Master Targets During Error Correction When Teaching Skills to Children with Autism. Discrete trial training, a highly effective methodology for teaching new skills, is a ubiquitous component of early intervention programs for young children with autism. Numerous curriculum manuals and textbooks describe the essential features of discrete trial training based on the initial work of LOBOS and procedural variations that have been drawn from research and practice. One such procedural variation that is the focus of the current study is how the therapist responds when the learner does not exhibit a correct response. It is typically recommended that the therapist provide some sort of feedback, such as saying no or delivering a model prompt, followed by an opportunity for the learner to exhibit the correct response independently. Research has examined a variety of error correction methods, many of which require the learner to practice the correct response contingent on errors. In a number of studies, for example, the therapist required the learner to exhibit the response independently at least once prior to presenting a new instructional trial. In one method, the instruction is given, and, upon the occurrence of an incorrect answer or no response, the therapist occasions a prompted response. Following the prompted response, the therapist represents the initial instruction so that the learner has an opportunity to give an independent, correct response. Some authors have suggested that therapists should insert a known target between a prompted response and an opportunity for an independent response when implementing error correction procedures. Not inserting poses two potential problems. First, if a therapist routinely follows a prompted response with an opportunity to exhibit the same response independently, the learner may learn to simply ignore the SD and repeat the previously prompted response. Second, the therapist could inadvertently shape a behavior chain consisting of an incorrect response followed by a correct response. The recommendation to insert at least one mastered trial with a master target between a prompt and the additional practice opportunity would reduce the likelihood of these unintended effects that might impede or slow skill acquisition. To our knowledge, no studies have evaluated the specific benefits, if any, of inserting master targets during error correction procedures by directly comparing the effectiveness of error correction procedures with and without inserted targets. The purpose of this experiment was to address this question by comparing the outcomes of discrete trial training when the therapist inserted trials with master targets as part of a commonly used error correction procedure versus when the therapist inserted trials with master targets between instructional trials following correct responses. Participants included four children who had been diagnosed with autism by professionals unaffiliated with the research. All of the subjects attended a university-based therapy center for individuals with autism where they received behavior analytic services. Each child was able to sit and work at a table for at least 15 minutes with little to no problem behavior and had no known sensory or motor impairments. The primary dependent variables were the frequency of independent correct responses and the number of sessions to meet mastery criteria. The secondary dependent variables were the total number of error correction trials, the total number of repeated error correction trials, and the mean repeated error correction trials per session. Prior to the study, I selected 18 training targets for each child by examining a list of the child's future acquisition goals prepared by the clinic therapist or the results of a recently completed assessment of basic language and learning skills. Potential targets were assessed prior to the study and selected if correct responding remains below chance levels. Six targets were assigned to each of the three sets, and three targets from each set were randomly assigned to each of the two teaching conditions. However, we deviated from random assignment in some cases when attempting to control for any differences in target difficulty across conditions. Specifically, we examined and then reassigned targets when holding constant the shape and complexity of the related stimulus material or the number of syllables in the target name. Provided here is one example of one of the participants' targets selected for this study. In baseline, the experimenter randomly presented three targets five times each for a total of 15 trials per session, not including trials with master targets. On each trial, the experimenter presented the SD, waited five seconds for a response, and provided no consequences for correct or incorrect responses. 
Master targets were interspersed with the training targets on a one-to-one -one ratio and correct responses to the master targets produced praise only. In the insertion teaching condition of error correction, the experimenter presented the SD, contingent on a correct response, delivered reinforcement, presented a master target, and then presented the next training target. Contingent on an incorrect response or no response, the experimenter presented the SD with an effective prompt, acknowledged the correct prompted response, presented a master target, and represented the initial SD. If the learner then provided a correct response, we delivered reinforcement and presented the next training trial. If the learner gave an incorrect response again, the process of the error correction trial was repeated up to a maximum of five times. A video of the insertion error correction procedures will be shown here. Touch heart. Touch heart. That's touching heart. Good job. Do this. Awesome job. Touch heart. Fantastic job touching the heart. Very nice, my friend. My turn. Touch square. Touch square. Touch square. Fast touch the square. Awesome job. Do this. Very nice. And what I did, touch square. Excellent touching the square, my friend. Good working. In the no insertion error correction procedure, the experimenter presented the SD and contingent on a correct response, delivered reinforcement, presented a master target, and presented the next training target. Contingent on an incorrect or no response, the experimenter presented the SD with the effective prompt, acknowledged the correct prompted response, repeated the initial SD immediately, contingent on the correct response here, the experimental delivered reinforcement, presented the master target, and then presented the next training target. Contingent on the incorrect response to the representation, the error correction procedure was repeated up to a maximum of five times. A video of the no insertion condition will be shown here. Touch rectangle. Touch rectangle. Excellent job. Touch rectangle. That's touching the rectangle. Fantastic working. Do this. Mwah. Mwah. Excellent job making my sound. Super job working. Touch octagon. Touch octagon. That's touching octagon. Touch octagon. You got it, my friend. Very nice. My turn. Super de duper. Do this. Wow. Okay. What is it? What is it? Rectangle. Rectangle. Fantastic. What is it? Rectangle. You got it. Nice working. My turn. What is it? Side down. What is it? Triangle. Triangle. Very nice. What is it? Triangle. You got it. Data on percentage of independent correct responses per session are shown in this graph. For Kyle, the left panel, correct responding increased immediately from baseline during training for all target sets. Results for Kyle suggested that it was more effective to insert master skills following error correction trials than during error correction trials. For Maggie, the right panel, Maggie, Maggie never responded correctly during baseline sessions for the three target sets. She met the master criterion in both conditions within a similar number of sessions for all three target sets. These results suggest that the conditions were equally effective for her. Results for Ian are shown in the left panel. For all target sets, Ian engaged in low levels of correct responding during baseline and showed immediate increases in performance during training under both conditions. With sets 1 and 3, Ian met the mastery criterion for the targets in the two conditions in a similar number of sessions. On the other hand, with set 2, he met the mastery criterion for the targets in the insertion condition in fewer sessions relative to those in the no insertion condition. Thus, when looking at total number of sessions to meet mastery criteria, Ian's results suggested similar outcomes under the two conditions for two of the three sets and better outcomes under the insertion condition for one set. Results for Jake are shown in the right panel. Jake never responded correctly to the intraverbal questions during baseline for each target set. He either stated, I don't know, or did not respond at all. Correct responding immediately increased during training under both conditions. 
Like Maggie, Jake met the mastery criteria in both conditions within a similar number of sessions for all three sets. As shown here, Kyle required fewer number of error correction trials for the targets in the no insertion condition than for the targets in the insertion condition for all target sets. Similar results were obtained for the repeated error correction trials as well as for the mean number of repeated trials per session. Maggie also received fewer total error correction trials, repeated error correction trials, and mean repeated error correction trials per session in the no insertion condition than in the insertion condition for two of the three target sets, suggesting some advantage to the no insertion condition. In a similar manner, Ian required fewer total error correction trials during the no insertion condition than in the insertion conditions for sets one and two. He also required fewer repeated error correction trials and mean repeated error correction trials per session in the no insertion condition for all sets. Finally, although Jake received a similar total number of error correction trials under the two conditions, he required fewer repeated error correction trials and mean repeated error correction trials per session under the no insertion condition for all sets. Together, these results suggest an advantage to the no insertion condition in terms of overall efficiency. Moreover, regardless of the data on relative number of sessions to meet the mastery criterion, all participants were more likely to exhibit an independent response when the prompted response was followed immediately by the opportunity to exhibit an independent response during error correction. A recommended variation of a commonly used error correction procedure, inserting trials with master targets between prompted responses and opportunities to exhibit independent responses, did not appear to confer any advantages over a variation without this feature for the majority of children and targets in this study. When the SD is immediately represented following a prompted response during the error correction procedure, the learner may simply learn to repeat the prompted response and not attend to the SD. Further, the procedure may result in a response chain consisting of incorrect, prompted, and independent responses if the independent response are followed by reinforcement during error correction, as was the case in this study. Results for nearly all targeted responses were inconsistent with these possible outcomes. Given prior research demonstrating the effectiveness of the no insertion error correction procedure, it was not surprising that the children acquired the majority of the training targets under this condition. However, no studies had directly compared the effectiveness of inserting versus no insertion approaches. In fact, the shorter latency between the prompted response and the opportunity for an independent response characteristic of the no insertion procedure may have been beneficial for some of the participants. Together, these findings suggest that providing an opportunity to respond independently immediately following a prompted response may not have detrimental effects on acquisition for most children and targets. This approach to error correction, in fact, may confer advantages in some cases. However, the somewhat idiosyncratic effects within and across participants suggest some benefits to conducting direct comparisons of error correction procedures when developing programs and instructional strategies for individual learners. Potential reasons for the differences in the conditions for Ian and Kyle should be examined in further research. Because the insertion procedure necessarily extended the delay between the prompt and the opportunity to respond independently, experimenters might hold this variable constant across conditions in future sessions. Additional studies should examine variations of the insertion approach, along with other error correction procedures that might improve the effectiveness and efficiency of discrete trial training. Our conclusion should be viewed with caution until further research is conducted. One potential limitation is that the number of trials with master targets in the insertion condition was not yoked to those in the no insertion condition. The experimenter presented master targets between instructional trials during the no insertion condition to help equate the two conditions on this variable because some research findings suggest that inserting master targets with acquisition targets can improve performance during instruction. Nonetheless, in the insertion condition, the experimenter repeated the error correction sequence, including insertion of the master target, until the participant responded correctly without a prompt. Therefore, some sessions in the insertion condition contained more trials with master targets than those in the no insertion condition. This may have conferred an advantage to the insertion conditions, however results are inconsistent with this possibility. Thank you so much for showing an interest in my research.